Yep, we're back in the forest guys. My favorite spot to try out my cameras and just be creative. But instead of using a camera today, I thought it would be a good idea to shoot a cinematic video or B-roll with my smartphone. Oh, and I also didn't bring anyone because I'm gonna film myself. Should be a fun challenge. Okay, so what do you think? Looks pretty cool, right? I shot the sequence in around two hours, I think, but wow, it was difficult. Am I getting too old for this sh Maybe I am, but yeah, I underestimated it, doing everything myself. Wow, and now I just sound really lazy. But anyway, I'll show you the behind the scenes and in between I'll give you some tips and tricks for shooting a cinematic solo B-roll with your smartphone. It doesn't matter what brand of smartphone you have as long as it can shoot video. And well, there is no brand that can shoot video, right? No, I'm just being stupid now. But anyway, my first idea was to bring a tripod, but because not everyone has a tripod, I also didn't bring one. So we're gonna have to improvise today and use the trees, whatever we can find. This is an iPhone 6. It's five years old, I think, but that's okay because if we can create something cool with this, then we can create something cool with any camera. And I didn't use any special settings on my phone. The most important thing is that I shot everything in slow motion, 60 frames per second. But if your phone shoots 120 frames per second, that will work too, of course. And also, the more manual controls you have, the better. I used manual focus, manual exposure and manual white balance. The more you can control manually, the better. But it's not a must, it will just make everything a little bit easier. My old iPhone did a pretty good job. The only thing I noticed was that sometimes there's a weird wobble. I think it's the stabilization. But anyway, back to the forest. The first thing I usually do is get the establishing shots and the details to show the atmosphere of the forest. And I always get enough so that I can cut them in between all of the other shots. Thing that looks really good. This stump here looks really cool with all the moss and stuff. Just found a cool forest creature. Take a look at this guy. You see that? The slug. Let's try to get a cool shot of him too. Okay, so that's it for the details. You probably saw that I used a lot of camera movements and that's really important here because in the next shots where I'm gonna film myself, there's not gonna be any camera movement. So I really wanted a lot of movement in those details and establishing shots. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't add movement later when editing those static shots. For some shots in the sequence, I faked some camera movement to make them a little bit more dynamic. I shot everything in 1080p, so I lost a little bit of image quality there, but for YouTube videos, it's not a big deal. That little bit of extra movement really makes the difference. The next shot is gonna be a shot of me, a wide shot walking through the forest. Yeah, I'm looking for something to put my phone on so that I don't have to put it on the ground. I don't know, I hope I can find something. Ah, man, it's so hard if you have to do everything by yourself, but I found this little birdhouse here and I think that's perfect to put my phone on, then I can hit record and walk through the forest. Let's see what happens. This was definitely the biggest problem, not having a tripod, because you don't want to put your phone on the ground all the time, because then all your shots look the same. It is possible without a tripod, because I did it, but if you have one, even if it's just a gorilla pod, take it, because it will make everything so much easier. Something else that would work, and I thought about this later, is just take some rope or strings to tie your phone to trees or branches. You know, you can let it hang from a branch. Something like that. I think that would work too. Improvise. 
Okay, back to the birdhouse. Okay. Uh. One more time because I went out of the frame. Perfect. Next is gonna be a shot of my feet while I'm walking through the forest and for this I'm gonna put my phone somewhere on the ground. Okay, so I put my phone here on the ground and now I'm just gonna walk past it. There you go. Super simple. And I'm gonna walk over there. The next shot is gonna be the most difficult one because I'm gonna film myself with my phone and then I'm gonna pretend to take pictures with this camera. So something like this. And something I didn't film here is how I set the focus on my face because when I'm filming myself with my phone, I can't see the screen, so I don't know what's in focus. What I did is use manual focus, of course, and then set the focus on my hand first, like this, because it's the same distance to my face. Then I lock the focus and I can just take my phone and film myself and my face will be in focus because it's the same distance. Also make sure to do one test shot before you do 20 different takes, okay? Oh, and I look pretty stupid doing this, but hey, it is what it is. I hope I have a good one, but I'm not sure because it's actually really difficult, so fingers crossed. And now the last shot is just me walking out of the forest, so into the distance. And finally, I want to show you how I added that lens flare because, well, maybe you noticed it, but it was not a real lens flare. I just added it to add a little extra something to the footage. It's actually really simple. First, download a lens flare. You can find tons of free files on Google, all colors and styles. Then in DaVinci Resolve, and I bet it's the same in every editing program, drop the file on your timeline and in the inspector, set the composite mode to screen. That's it. Done. Then you can of course resize it and change the position. Now for a few shots that's all I did but for some I added some keyframes to make the lens flare move with the camera movement. Like I've said before just check out some basic tutorials on keyframing. It's not that difficult but super useful. That's also how I faked this camera movement by the way. Okay, and that's it for the behind the scenes, guys. Now, even though I really like the end results because it was also my first time using my phone like this, I do think that I should have used a lot more different angles. The thing is, when you do something like this by yourself, you should keep it simple, don't make it too complicated. But shooting a lot of different angles of the same scene will make it a little bit easier later when editing to make your production look a lot bigger than it actually is you and your phone. So that's where you can make the difference. Shoot a lot of different angles of the same scene. Anyway, I hope you liked it. If you did, maybe give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.